the more aggressive, the more intense we win that ball in that very moment, the more we take this, this uh, intensity and this tempo into the counterattack. Let's talk about the coaching philosophy then. How would you describe the basic idea of your playing style? Well, as I said, it's about controlling the game. And in fact, we have five different situations in football in the meantime that in the end decide football games. What happens if we have the ball ourselves? How do we play against defensive teams, against teams that maybe attack high or try to press us? So you need to have, as a coach, a, a very clear idea of how do we want to play if we have the ball ourselves. Number two is, what do we want to do if the other team has got the ball? What kind of information, match plan, game plan do I give my players when the other team has got the ball? Our idea is clear. It's very, very similar to my, I would almost say, coaching friend, uh, Jürgen Klopp. Our football, our Red Bull football is heavy metal, rock and roll, and it's not slow waltz, you know, if I mean. I, we hate square passes, back passes. Just having the ball ourselves as la pour la doesn't make sense. And then we have the, 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 the two situations of transition. What happens in the very moment when we lose the ball and what happens in the very moment when we win the ball? This is number three and number four. And then, of course, you have the set pieces, also highly important. More than 30% of all the goals are being scored after set pieces. If we are honest as football coaches, what does that mean? If 30% of all the goals are being scored after set pieces, how much, of, how much percentage of our training time should we invest in set pieces? If 30% of all the goals are being scored after set pieces, how much of our training time should we invest into set pieces? Huh? 30%. Let's be honest with ourselves. Do we, do we invest 30% of our training time into set pieces? Offensive, defensive. Corner kicks, free kicks, even throw-ins. We are not. Huh? And um, yeah, so those are the five situations. And all the top teams, if you look into the last two or three years of the Champions League winning teams, they were in all five areas above average, if not top. And I'm convinced in the future that if you want to win titles, if you want to win the Champions League, if you win, want to win the World Cup with a national team, you have to make sure that in all those five areas you are, you are state of art. Um, on the tactics, transition, it's a key word. You've used it a few times. Why is it so important? Well, as we said, I mean, in the very moment you win the ball, and again, it depends how you want to play yourself. We spoke about Liverpool, about Jurgen Klopp. We spoke about Leipzig, the way that we played with Leipzig or with Salzburg now. It's about putting the other team under pressure, no matter if it's high up. The higher up, the better. But wherever the ball is, we try to win the ball back. And we also found out that it's not only about where we win the ball back. Obviously, the higher up we win the ball back, the closer the distance to the other team's goal, keeper and goal. And the higher up we win the ball, the less players the other team have at that very moment behind the ball to prevent us from creating a, a, a chance or to score. But we also found out that it's not only about the, the, the location where we win the ball, it's also about the intensity the more aggressive, the more intense we win that ball in that very moment, the more we take this, this uh, intensity and this tempo into the counterattack. Uh, so that means the more intense we win the ball, the bigger the chance that we create from this. Uh, and for example, in, in the last year when we were coaching Leipzig two and a half years ago, out of 75 goals we scored, more than 60% we scored after winning the ball 10 seconds before. And the same is true with, um, with, uh, um, with uh, winning the ball back, um, or when, when we lose the ball and winning the ball back. The same is true. I mean, if we know that the biggest chance is to win the ball within eight seconds, it makes sense to not waste time. So all the players around the ball 
have to try and win the ball back. And then also highly important, we saw that in our first, pre first presentation today, it's rest defense, because if you play aggressive, high pressing, you need to make sure that the defenders, no matter if you play with two or three central defenders, that they make sure that the, the only one or two players that the other team has got up front, that they are being marked. They have to be closely marked because those two players or this one player is the only player that might be able to, if they, we allow them to control the ball, that we get the counter attack ourselves. And this is about rest defense. This is also n nothing less than a, a train the brain issue because it's very easy to, 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 for a central defender. And they don't necessarily need to be fast in order to do that, to mark when the ball is still at the other team's 16 yard box to mark this one or two players very closely, even mark through, mark ahead of them and the other one like a sandwich mark behind him. And this is what we call rest defense. And this is also for me a very important thing that you also train this, not only tell the players that they should do it, but also train it in the training sessions.